this morning in our Sunday school class. And I do want to invite anyone that would like to join us on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock. We are studying the Declaration of Faith, the articles that the Church of God believes with the scriptural background for that. It's a very interesting class, and we invite you all to come and be part of that. But as we were talking about that, we're, today was about conversion, about salvation. And aren't you glad that the Lord loves us so much that he provided a way that we can repent of our sins, that we can change, our lives can be changed, and we can have an eternal life with him? Amen? Amen. Well, this song that we're going to sing this morning starts out, it says, this is my testimony from death to life for what God has done for me. We're going to sing his praises this morning. Would you join us? Would you stand and let's sing together? Let's worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Amen. Run for cover But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power Grace rewrote my story, I'll testify, 
bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah.
Lord. Yes, Lord. That is our desire, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. How many of you know that we are living in the last days? The Word of God tells us that in the last days it's going to be as it was in the days of Elijah, as it was in the days of Moses, as it was in the days of Ezekiel. Behold, He is going to come. One of these days, are you looking for His return? Amen. Come on, put your hands together.
Father, we come before you today. Quieten, Lord, all the voices that are from outside of your sanctuary. And let us hear, Heavenly Father, you speak into our lives. Father, we pray for those that are sick in body, unable to be in the house of God. We, we pray for those that are even here this morning who need a miracle in their life. We pray, Almighty God, for a miracle to take place. Lord, let healing power flow through this sanctuary today. Father, where it's need of a healing in their body, a healing in their mind, a healing in relationships, in a marriage, a family, Heavenly Father. Lord, meet the need of all of these, Almighty God. Have your way, Heavenly Father. Lord, Lord do in our lives. Do, do what you would desire to do, Almighty God. Father, we're going to give you the praise. We're going to give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please uh, greet somebody around you and let them know that you're glad to be in the Lord's house with them today and worshiping with them today. And I want to say thank you to our praise and worship band this morning. Uh, some of you may be keenly aware that uh, Abishai is not with us today. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm not saying anything about you guys. I'm just saying that Abishai wasn't here. Uh, Abishai is uh, with his family. They are doing a special uh, ministry today. They they they. On once a year, they go to Frozen Head, and in that park in Frozen, they have a wonderful outdoor service. And Abishai is assisting his father-in-law and their family uh, with that service today. And we we miss him here, but we know that the ministry that he's doing there is is a wonderful ministry as well. So we just praise God. But I I appreciate William and Rick and Shannon and and, and them filling in and <laughs> taking up the slack. Amen. We are in the book of Romans. We're in Romans chapter 12. Uh, we, uh, we ventured into two verses uh, last Sunday morning. That was uh, uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2. And, and we're looking at the passage of Scripture that, uh, that Paul begins to tell us how that we are to walk out what he's been telling us for these last 11 chapters. The, the first 11 chapters are theology. They talk about our relationship with God the Father. It tells about us, uh, that we are all sinners and that we're in need of a Savior, that we have a gift, a wonderful gift of salvation. It is a gift from God and, and that we have that. that and he tells us that, that we can be in right relationship with him by faith that we become, we, we become children of God and adopted into the family. And so, so, so these 11 chapters have been preparing us now to, to, to learn how to walk. And now, I, I, was, I was kind of, you know, excited about last Sunday and thought we did a great job. But you know what I heard people say? Boy, you really got them guys told last Sunday. The, the, the list of things that you have to tell a guy to do, to, you know. Everybody kind of focused in on that. Well, let's go get some more of that today. We're going to have some more lists today because that's exactly what Paul gives us. He gives us a list of things that we are to do as believers. These are how we, and, and, and it's not just a guy's list. This is everybody's list. 
that, that we are to walk this out and how we walk it out. So today we're going we're gonna to read through the first eight verses again. So one and two, we've already covered them, and I'm not going to go into a great deal of depth in that, those two verses, but we are going to look at some very important things as a part of the church, the body of Christ, the operation of the ministries and the gifts within the body of Christ, that there is some really important stuff that is here so that individuals can be, can be blessed. So if you have your Bibles, if you have your Bibles, Hello, if you have your Bibles, uh, did you bring your Bible with you today? All right, you brought your Bibles with you. Wonderful. Okay, R Romans uh, chapter 12, and I've gone over a little bit of this already. Uh, the, the, the text that we've been using for this, this whole study in Romans is, is 12 and 1. And so here we are. Uh, and so we, we've gone through that. Let's, let's do this. Now I'm reading from the, we're reading together in the New King James Version of the Bible. Okay, so here it is. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Now, now what we normally do, some of you, I, I see a couple of new faces. What we normally do is I read the odd-numbered passages, and then together we read the even-numbered. So join with us if you, if you want. If you, can, if you don't have your Bible, you can read off the wall. That's fine. So let's go to verse 2 now of this passage. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you, this is still verse 3, for do, uh, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Now together. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. Verse 5. So we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Together now. Having then gifts... Differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them if prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us in it, and in our ministry, he who teaches in teaching, verse 8, and he who exhorts in exhortation, and he who gives with liberality, and he who leads with diligence, and he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Father, uh, speak into our lives. And, and this, Father, is a, this is, this is a real how-to, and you, you put it in your word, and so we, we dare not forsake it. But Father, there may be some today that didn't come for a how-to, and they came for a receive-in. And so I just ask you, Almighty God, that you would use what we have to say to speak into the lives of each one that is gathered here today. God, we're going to give you all the praise. We're going to give you all the glory in Jesus' name. And amen. Amen. So here are those two verses again. Verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed. Whoop. Let's see. Uh, gentlemen, I think we got the wrong set of slides. That's last week's. On that jump drive, 
It should have been today's. For 428. Is, is that the only set we have? I'll tell you what. You got your Bibles? Good. Let's go to Romans. Romans chapter 12. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Now do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So here's what's happened right here. Paul has already given us a list. And the first thing is that we present our bodies a living sacrifice. The next thing he tells us to do is that, that this should be an acceptable sacrifice to God. All right, there we go. No problem, Joe. Thank you so much. All right, now we're going to go through all this again. All right. That's okay. I can click pretty quick. Here's the list we've already got. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Two, do not be conformed to the world. Be transformed. Number three, be renewing by the renewing of your mind. Renew your mind. And then four, prove the good and the perfect will of God. So, and, and, and just in this first verse, Paul has already given, here's what you need to do. These are the things that you can do. You, you can write this down or you, you can go back and watch it. On the, on the YouTube or on the Facebook, you can go back and you get that list. But here is a thing that Paul is already giving us things that we need to be doing. Here's the problem. So often we read the Word of God, but we don't do anything about it. We, we read it. We, we, we see what it says, but that doesn't affect us. And, and Paul is saying, Here's a list, and this is how it ought to affect us, how it ought to impact us. For I say to you, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you. Now, we're going to get into today's sermon, okay? And here it is. By grace, grace, keros, the divine influence upon our hearts uh, and its reflection in the life. That's just what this word grace means. Now, we, we think about grace just being, well, that, you know, we're, we're going to be kind to somebody. But that's not the original intent. That's not the original definition that we have in the Greek language. It is a divine influence of God in our lives when you feel blessed. And we've been reading a lot about the blessings of God in the previous chapters when we know the mercies that God has extended to us, that, that ought to be an influence into us. And because we see what God has done, then we ought to be able to reflect in our lives what he has done as we are among others. As, as we're around other people. We ought to be what he's called us to be, salt and light. That's what he's called us to be. All right, so we're in the grace. Uh, you're going to have to forward me on there, Brother Joe. I need the next one, please. Okay. And not to think, not to think. That's in our mind. That's one thing about Church, sometimes we get the idea that, that we just leave our mind at the side and we, and we believe God with our heart and our faith. And, and, but, but, but that's not what Paul is saying. No, Paul is saying, think in your mind of, of themselves. Uh, that, that we all not think of ourselves more highly than we ought to. Okay, for I say that through grace given to me, now the grace that was given to Paul was the grace to be an apostle. He was called by God and divinely influenced by God to be an apostle. And he says, and this grace that was given to me, this grace that I have in my life, that I'm called to be an apostle, but the same grace, the same Holy Spirit is given to each and every believer, to everyone, even me, even you. We ought to be able to say today, I know God's grace in my life. 
I know that God's at work in my life. I know the Lord is doing. It, it doesn't, listen, it doesn't matter what our history has been. It, it doesn't matter what yesterday was. It, it is now that today... The grace of God is in our lives. And because the grace of God is in our lives, that we can be changed. That that we ought not to think of ourselves more highly than we ought. Is something that we need to stop right here and realize that in the culture in which we live today, people have a tendency to think of themselves more highly than they ought. We live in a Western society. You know what it is? Number one, you gotta be number one. You gotta be your team's gotta be number one. You gotta be number one. You gotta have the number one car. You gotta have the latest gadget. You gotta, you gotta be the top in all of it. You gotta be producing more on the job. You gotta have the best numbers. I mean, we talk about it all the time in our conversation, in our culture. It says, I've got to be better than everybody else. But Paul says, no. We're not to think of ourselves more highly than we ought to. Understanding that in the church, in the family of believers, that God has given out gifts. And that there are some people that have one gift over another. It doesn't mean that somebody is better or somebody's higher or somebody's at a different level. It just means that they have been gifted by God at that area and that each of us have certain gifts. Now, my wife leads the singing. You don't want me leading the singing. I promise you. Uh, we'll get on the telephone. We, we had it this week. One of, one of the, somebody had a birthday and and so we're going to get on the phone and sing happy birthday to the, 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 the nephew. And so we started singing. <clears throat> I was in the wrong key, I could tell. So I just, all right, Alice, go ready. I don't know that I've ever been in the right key when I've been singing. So, so, but, that, but there are people that are gifted to do certain things. There, there are some gifts in the church that I am not good at. Singing being one of them, but I'm going to tell you another one that's really, sometimes I just, mm, and that's, that's whenever I'm supposed to be operating in the gift of benevolence. What? Yeah, I'm going to be open with you, honest with you. Sometimes when in the area of benevolence, and, and, and somebody comes and, 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 and they're saying, Hey, can you help me? I had a phone call this week. Can you give out gas money? Can you give me some gas money? And first of all, I said, well, who is this? Because they were texting me on my phone, and I had no idea who it was. Somebody's been giving out my phone number again. Stop it. I, I, I said, well, who, who is this? And they didn't answer. They said, I need gas money. They didn't tell me who they were. They didn't. I said, well, how do I know you? And they still didn't. I need gas money. I said, well, hold on a minute now. And then I asked questions, have you ever attended our church? I didn't hear anything else from them. Uh, sometimes, I'm, I'm just not the best. Sometimes, here, here it is truth now too. Sometimes I go way overboard. You know what I found out a long time ago? Here it is. Takers will always take. And givers will always give. And the takers know who the givers are. So we've got to be careful about operating in some of those gifts. Some of them are just cultural, but then there are some others. I praise God for Steve Cagle in our church. Yeah, give him a round of applause to Steve Cagle. Yeah. One thing I learned about Steve a long time ago, he has a gifting of the Holy Spirit to deal with people in these situations. Steve 
he can see right through some folks and know exactly who and, 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 he, and he can question them and, and knows exactly what, you know, what to ask them. And, and, and here I am opening up my billfold and start, you know, shelling out. But Steve's asking questions. You see, there's some people that are gifted in those areas and some of the areas that I'm not gifted. And that's the way it is in church. It's not big me and, and, and you know, and I am I'm bored. No, 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 no. It is we are all in this together and we ought not to think of ourselves. Because I got news for you. You can shine as bright as you want to, but there's always going to be another bulb that's got an extra watt. All right? So we ought not to think of ourselves more highly than we, we ought to think. But think soberly. Now, I want you to understand that that word literally means correctly. There's some folks, they, they know what to think of themselves. I, I will never forget, I, I was... We were pastoring a church out on the West Coast, and, and I had a young man had just been, he had just been selected as one of the elders of the church, and, and, and we were talking about the different ministries of people in the church, and, and I was going down through there, and, and I came to this young man who was sitting right across in front of me, and, and I said, well, what is your gifting, and, and what, do, what do you think that, that God is calling you to? Keep you straight. Oh. You know what I said to him? I said, you ain't big enough because I got a God that I have to answer to. There's some folks that think they somehow got something special, that they got something different. Paul is saying each one of us have received it the very same way. We all receive this gifting. We all receive the, the empowering of the Holy Spirit. We all receive it the same way. So it's not we should look at somebody and say, oh, wow, look at them. No, no, no. We should think correctly about us. And here is what it is. God has chosen me. God has put his Holy Spirit in me. He's placed me in his church. He has a plan in my life for his kingdom. I mean, each one of us ought to understand the Holy Spirit is looking at you. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what your past. God has a plan for your life. But we've got to allow the Holy Spirit to operate in our lives. bothers me when folks finally they've outgrown I'm going to tell you right now in all of these years I've been pastor here for 30 years and then we were pastor in seven years and two years and I've seen it over and over again when somebody finally thinks that the stage that they're singing on isn't big enough for them When, when what they're doing isn't big enough for them. But, but it's not them. It's God and his Holy Spirit working in them. There was this guy in Texas. He was poor. I mean, tumbleweeds was about the only thing that you know, ever came his way. And he was poor in his little ranch out there in Texas. But, but somebody discovered oil on his property. Wow, he became instantly wealthy. He became a multimillionaire. And you know what he did? He went out and bought him the biggest Cadillac that he could find. Wiggle, big old fins on the back of it. And it wasn't long enough, so he added two or three uh, extra uh, 
tires on the back of it so it could make it longer. And, and he'd ride through town with his, with his Cadillac. And man, everybody goes, ooh, look at how big that car is. But he'd, he'd go this way and that way. He never ran over anybody, never hit him, never got into an accident. Because you see, them two big old horses that he had attached to the front of that Cadillac, they were going down through the street, and everybody hear the horses and the hoofs, and they'd just get out of his way. He never knew there was an engine in that Cadillac that if he would turn the key, would pull it forward, would drive. And I'm afraid there's some folks in church that they just want something bigger, not realizing it's not, it's not what we got out there in front of us, it's what we have inside of us. The Holy Spirit is the engine, the power within us, and that God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. I'm going to tell you right now, I know some people who are huge in the kingdom of God. And if I called out their name right now, you would say, I never heard of that one. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're prayer warriors. And some of them have been confined to their home for years because of age and illness. And they've not gotten out into public lately. But they're huge in the kingdom of God because they know the operation of the Spirit and they know that it's through prayer that God's hand is moved. They know that it's through prayer that the Holy Spirit comes in. They know that it's through prayer that a revival will happen. It is through prayer. Think correctly of yourself. Here's another list. Think correctly of yourself. Knowing that you belong to God. So right here in the middle of my sermon, yeah, right here in the middle of my sermon, I'm going to give you the ABCs. Admit that you need God. I'm all alone. I have no future. I have no hope. I need God, and I must admit I need God. Believe, believe that Jesus loves you, that Jesus loves you even more than you love yourselves. He loves you. He loved you so much that he was willing to go to the cross and, and to die for you. And then see, confess him as the Lord of your life. So right here in the middle of the sermon, talking about the gifting and the operation of the Holy Spirit, I want you to know there is nothing more important in your life than knowing that you belong to Jesus. I don't know what gift I have. I'm not really worried about that right now. Do you belong to Jesus? Well, I, I, I don't know if I don't, I don't No, 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 no. Stop worrying about all that other stuff. Do you know Jesus? A, B, C. No, you have been given spiritual gifts for the benefit of the body of Christ. Now, this is not the only place that we get this message, but there's several times in Scripture where we, where we hear over and over again, you may be gifted... But you didn't get that gift so you could start yourself a one-man band. You didn't get that gift so you could go out and, and, and have yourself a, you know, a big old crusade and a whole uh, uh, group of people following after you. No, no, no. You didn't get that for that. You got it because God wants to use you in the body of Christ. But to think soberly, correctly, as God has dealt to us, these gifts have come from God. What gifts? We're fixing to get into them. But there are these spiritual gifts that come from God that we absolutely, that we absolutely can, cannot boast in and of ourselves. You remember the, the story in the book of Acts where 
some young guys. They, 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 they found a man who was demon possessed and, and they were going to cast that demon out. And so they said, in, in, in the name of Jesus, and who Paul preaches, and, 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 and they, they started going down the list. And, and, and you know what happened? The demon said, well, then, Paul, I know Jesus, I know, I don't know who you are. Why? Because they didn't understand the necessity of the Holy Spirit abiding and living within our life. W- what is that? That that is Jesus being the center of our lives. That's the transformational power of the resurrection, taking us from our dead state of human existence and transforming us into the supernatural existence of God Almighty. There are people who are in church that are still trying to do it by their own strength. And by their own might, it hasn't and it never will work. For we have many members in one body, but as the members do not have the same function, we're not all armpits. Some of y'all don't remember that song. That was one of them great hymns a long time ago. I'm not an armpit for Jesus. You see, you weren't in children's ministry. We were in children's ministry, and we did puppets and things. And we had this. We had a, we had a puppet song that we did that was talking about that that I, I, he wasn't an armpit for Jesus. But but we are a part of the body. We are we're called to do something. Some people are called to be the mouth. Some people are the eyes. Some people are the ears, the hands, the feet. We are a part of this body. And we are to do what he has called us to do as a part of the body. And just because we're not one part of the other, don't go, go in trying to tell God how to reorganize the body. You know, I think it would be great if we had eyeballs on the end of our fingers. I wouldn't have to get up on a ladder to look on the shelf. I can just, oh, okay. Or I'd get down under the bed and go, oh, okay. I don't have to get down on my knees anymore. I just look. I mean, because I got the eyeball right there on the end of my finger. See what? And like, oh, I can do that. Except that when it came to hammering nails. Well, I'd be blind within the week, you know. God knows how to put it together. The body of Christ, the body of man. He knew how to create. And he knows exactly what's needed in every congregation, in every body, and in the body of Christ. Some people say, well, why in the world are there so many denominations? Because there are many parts of the body that are needed. And some of those denominations focus on something that's unique or different. It doesn't doesn't mean that they're out of the will of God. It means that they have focused on something. And they are as much a part of the body of Christ as anybody who calls him Lord and has been washed by the blood and has received him as Lord and Savior. It doesn't matter whether they're sitting on a Church of God Pentecostal pew or whether they're sitting on... Frozen, chosen iceberg somewhere. If they love Jesus. Because we are all parts of the body of Christ. We're all parts of the body. And we're going to do different things. I I love to see the way our people worship. And they worship in different ways. But don't expect me to be jumping up and down. I can't hardly walk now. I mean, there are some things that I can do, but other things I can't. 
And, and that is in the spirit as well. And so we've got to learn that there are different parts, and we've got to learn and respect each other for those different things. I'm telling you what, little Levi and and Bonnie, they're doing those flags. Ain't no way I wouldn't. I'd poke somebody's eyes out before I... Be careful where you're serving that you're gifted to serve in that area. Because if you're not gifted to serve in the area where you're serving, you might poke. Okay, you got that one. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul gives us that list, that that list list of the, the nine gifts. The five of those gifts are verbal gifts. They're speaking gifts. Uh, a gift of a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge. Uh, there is the prophecy, and then there is interp- there's tongues, and interpretation of tongues, and those five. And then the f- four, the, the dynamic gifts, the faith and healing and miracles and, and discernment of spirits. But those nine gifts that are there in, in Romans, I mean, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, are gifts that are unique and placed in the body for the totality, for the blessing of the body. Not for one individual to rise up over somebody else, but so that the whole body can be blessed. And Ephesians 4, 11 is the five-fold ministry of the ministries in the church. Pastors, teachers, evangelists, uh, uh, prophets. Yeah. All right, there's five of them. Okay. Uh, Joe, I got it hung up again. Joe's got a great gift and he can. All right, fivefold. Fivefold ministry. For the work of the ministry, for the equipping of the saints to do the work of ministry. So. What, we're, what, God, what Paul is talking to us about, what God is trying to get across to us here in Romans chapter 12, is that there are different giftings. Let's go down through those. Uh, Joe, I don't know what's happened. Okay, thank you. So we bring, so, so we being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. If you're part of a local church, then you ought to show up as a part of the local church. It's it's that old story about the the burning fireplace. Uh, this guy hadn't been to church in a while, and the preacher went to visit him, and, and he said, you haven't been in church in weeks. Why haven't you been in church? Well, I just haven't felt necessary to be in church. I haven't felt necessary to be, to be down there in that congregation. And, and so the preacher listened to all of the things that he was saying, and, and then he went over to the fireplace, and he took the poker, and, and he pulled off one of the logs off of the fireplace and just kind of set it aside. And in just a minute, that log that was on fire, when the preacher pulled it out, died. It was no longer on fire because it had failed to remain in and a part of. Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves. He's called us to unity. Now listen, not uniformity, but unity. I find it amazing when somebody says, well, I've got this gift. I'm gifted in this area. Okay, great. Let's use it in the body of Christ. But you're not gifted this way. Well, I may not be. That's why God brought you. No, 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 no. If you're not gifted this way, I can't can't stay under your ministry. Really? Why? Well, I need, to, I need to be where I can be. 
Really? That's not unity. And uniformity is not this unity. Uniformity is that we all do everything just exactly alike. I went into a church service not too long ago, and when I went into that church service, I noticed that all the ladies in the church, when they were worshiping God, they raised their hands a a certain way. I, I can't really describe what it was that they were doing, but every all the women in the church were doing this kind of I said, whoa, that's unusual. And then I, then I saw the pastor's wife. She came in, sat down on the platform. You know what she was doing? And, and so everybody was doing just exactly like she had. That's uniformity. That's trying to, we all want to be, no, no, no. We, don't, we do not want to be the same thing. We don't, don't, we don't want to worship God the same way. There may be people who don't shout as loud as you do. They don't get as excited about God as you do. But boy, they love the Word. And they'll be reading the Word and they'll know the Word. And then they can quote it from cover to cover. And then they can tell you what for and why and all of that. But but you're, you're all into the shout. But it ain't all about the shout. And it ain't all just about study, study, study either. It has to be a coming together in unity. Every church body should come together in unity. No matter, no matter what the individuality of the church is, we can still come together in unity. How can you do that? Because we have a wonderful gift, and it is the Holy Spirit of God. And the Holy Spirit of God overrides Pride. I said the Holy Spirit will override pride. Well, how you know when they when they're doing what they're supposed to be? I just I, I can ask them a few questions about the unity of the body. And if that pride still shines, then I understand it's not being led by the Holy Spirit, but it's being led by another spirit. Love covers the differences. Having the gifts... Differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. Let us use the gifts. The gifts were not given to sit on a shelf. The gifts were not given just to fill up a page. The gifts were not given just to be in a theological seminary somewhere that can be discussed and, and, and talked about by the minister preparing this. No, the gifts were given to the church to be used in the church's ministry to a lost and dying world. That's what the gifts are for. Not just to show off in the church house, but to show off in a lost world that needs to see the light. If we do prophecy, do it in proportion to our faith. Now, this word prophecy doesn't necessarily mean foretelling of future events. It it literally means... Speaking the word of God. So when we speak the word of God, we better know the word of God. We better have faith in the word of God. All right? And then the other, to do ministry. To do ministry. I love this word. Well, ministry, yeah, well, you ought to, you want, no, 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 no. I love this word. Ministry. The word in the original language is a word, and when I say it, all you Pentecostals say, Oh, yeah, we know what that is. And some of you that didn't, weren't raised Pentecostal might have a little problem with it, but it's parakletios. That's the Greek parakletios. What does that mean? Parakletios. Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. 
I'm not going to leave you as orphans and stranded alone. I'm going to give you a, another comforter, a paraclete, one who comes alongside. This word ministry, what it literally means is to come alongside. Okay, all right, all of you that were in our church care conference, be the cat. And some of you that weren't here, let me tell you what that means. Uh, Gerald had a picture of a dog who had had some surgery. And they had a big old cone on his head. And the dog was laying on a porch going, Woo. and this little cat came up and got inside the cone and laid down beside the dog, okay? And the cat was just there. He came alongside the dog because he knew the dog was hurting and he laid down inside the cone. There are times God calls us to do ministry and all he wants us to do is to come alongside of somebody else. You don't have to give them your grandma's solution and tell them about how good castor oil is when you mix it with turpentine and all them other things that you can share with them. Sometimes you don't need to share any of that. All you need to do is say, I'm here. And I'm here for you. And then he who teaches, passing along godly wisdom. Godly wisdom, teaching godly wisdom. And then eight, we get to it. And then who exhorts, exhorts. Exhort doesn't mean what we think it does sometimes. Uh, we had uh, some ladies, uh, Lori and Alyssa, they just got their exhorters. And, and sometimes we think that word exhorter is that I get to tell everything now that, that I've learned in, in school. No, 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 no. This is to offer words of comfort. N not tell them everything you know. I've taken some people visiting with me to the hospitals before, and we get in to visit somebody in the hospital, and before it's over with, we're, compar we're comparing operations. Somebody had 27 stitches. The other had 28 stitches. One was in there for five days. The other one was in there for two weeks. And they go back and forth and back. And I go, oh, Lord. It's not just to tell everything. It's to offer them God's help and God's wisdom. And, and, and when you give, you give liberally. Not begrudgingly. But you give. Everybody gives. Some people are called to be great givers. God has brought more funds into their life. He has blessed them in innumerable ways. They're just packed down and, and running over. And God has called in that person. Say, I want you to give. There was a, a pharmacist who, who paid for my first trip to go to Israel. I, I never even knew what his name was. But, and when I tried to inquire, when I tried to ask, somebody said, well, he just wants to pay your way to go to Israel. He doesn't want to be known. He doesn't want you to know him. He just wants to pay your way. He's been blessed. He wants to bless you. There are people that God uses supernaturally. He supernaturally brings, brings funds into their lives so that he can get them through them. I'm going to tell you right now, if God knows that you're all stopped up about something, he's not going to funnel a whole lot of stuff to you because he knows he can't get it through you. But if he can get it through you and he knows he can get it through you, then God's going to open up the windows of heaven and shower down a blessing that you're not going to be able to contain because God wants you not to be able just to contain it for yourself, but he wants to get it through your life into somebody else's. Now I want to tell you, there are people in this church 
God has blessed them beyond measure. And you couldn't even call their names. But they saw a way to give. They know how to put money into a situation. They're not rich. They're obedient. And they love to give. And they're liberal in their giving. And God has blessed them. And I praise God. There's, there are families in, in this church. They could have lived in bigger houses. They could have driven newer automobiles. They could have got, got, had different clothing. But, but rather than spending all of it on themselves, they said, no, we're going we're gonna to get what is, is comfortable, and then we're going to give. That's this kind of giving that the Holy Spirit speaks in you, that you're always looking for a... Now, Remember what I said? Y'all remember what I said earlier? Y'all won't forget that one. Takers, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, but looking for through the Holy Spirit a way to give to others. Allow the Holy Spirit. I'll get it back. Years ago, young man down here at Food City at the gas pumps, he pulled up in his car in the gas pump, and he saw me on the other side. He said, you're Preacher Acres, aren't you? And I said, yeah. He said, can you give me some money so I can get some gas? I said, sure. Do you know that not too long ago, I was down at Food City at the gas pumps again. And I was putting some gas in my car, and another car pulled up. Nice car. Ooh, that's a nice car. I like that. And the guy pulled up, and he slipped a $100 bill into my hand and said, here. And to be very honest with you, I didn't know who he was. I said, well, what, what, I said what, what? He said, you don't remember me, do you? I said, no, I don't. He said, a few years back, we were right here, almost the same spot, and I needed some gas money, and you put gas in my car. And he said, God has blessed me now, and I'm going to give this back to you. I'm telling you right now, that's the way God works. If you look for an opportunity, God will have a way to get back into your life through the supernatural. This Holy Spirit operates. Do you really believe that? I absolutely know that it works. Show mercy with cheerfulness. Well, if they just straighten their lives out, they can do as good as I am. Show mercy. Mercy. Oh God, but for your grace, that is my life. Oh God, but for your grace, there go I. Oh God, but for your grace. Somebody said to me the other day, if it wasn't for the grace of God, I would be dead. When we show mercy to others and we do it in a cheerful way, we're showing the grace of God into their lives. When we accept people who we may not normally accept into our circle, that's, that's us. That's us living out the Good Samaritan. He wasn't an acceptable one in the circle of the Jewish people. He he wasn't acceptable to, to the religious leaders. He wasn't. But he was the one that was the neighbor who showed love to someone 
who needed mercy. And I want to tell you something right now. You may think you know where they are. You may think you know how they're doing. But if God is saying, show mercy, I want to tell you, you will be blessed for showing mercy. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Almighty God, that you have shown us mercy. You have, you have gifted us with the Holy Spirit. And in with the gifting of the Holy Spirit, we, we have these gifts, these supernatural, dynamic gifts that come into our lives. Lord, have your way. Show us, Almighty God. Show us those that need mercy so that we can show mercy. Speak into our hearts, into our lives, Heavenly Father, first of all, so that we will know you as Lord and Savior. Have your way, Almighty God. Do in and through us as you desire to do. First and foremost, Almighty God, if there's one here this morning who does not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that today they would know Christ. That today they would know salvation. That today their name would be written in the Lamb's book of life. Lord, let that be a reality. Let the power and the dynamics of the Holy Spirit bring to pass that very thing, Heavenly Father. But then, Lord, here we are, parts of a body. May we know, Lord, your calling on our lives. May we shine in the place where you have put us. God will give you the praise. Hear this prayer in song. Hear this prayer in song. Would you please stand with us? Would you please stand? What we have to understand 
is that first and foremost, it's all about Jesus. It's about Jesus in our lives. That, that's the first thing. Don't go looking for other th- giftings and, and, and other exciting events first. Find Jesus and know Him as your Lord and Savior. And then when you have sought Him and you've given yourself as a living sacrifice to Him, God wants to use you. God wants to use you. But Satan will say, but what about your past? Tell Satan that Jesus has taken care of your past. It's all Him now. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Almighty God, for your great grace. I thank you for these people who have come to hear your word today and to worship you and to give you praise, Almighty God. I ask you, Heavenly Father, that you allow us to take the message, take this message of mercy and grace that you have given into our lives and let us share this with others, God. And God will give you the praise. We'll give you all the glory. In Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Let's give the Lord praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. Staff meeting tonight at 5 o'clock, please. Staff meeting tonight at 5 o'clock. All of our staff members in the web building. God bless you. Have a glorious week. May the gifts be in operation in your life as you encounter a world that is hurting. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You're dismissed. God bless you.